welcome back to another exciting episode of Comics and More, the podcast which is now a vlog of <laughs> where we talk about comics and more. I'm Andy. I'm Chris. I'm Steve. I'm Nola. I'm Lex. <laughs> Why you gotta go out of turn? I'm sorry. Now, now, they're gonna, now they can see how unprofessional we are. Well, he's gotta have the <laughs> headphones on. He's got to go out of turn. He's got to be special. He's, he's true. I've got to adjust the audio levels. <laughs> <laughs> he's very high maintenance. All right, so we'll start off talking about um, last week in Humanity, the new Marvel event of the season Ooh. of awesomeness came out, which um, I read and um, was mildly bored with for uh, 18 of the 22 pages, and then the last four pages made me really want to read issue two. I feel so, like that's how I hear most books. Yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> just how can we bore you for $5? But we'll give you that hook at the end, so you'll give it to us next month. Or it's either they have the hook, and they're like, oh, well, we need to write a story to lead up to that. Screw it. Just give them the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was, um, it's, what is it, Matt? Yeah, Matt Fraction's uh, newest semi-awesome sauce. Matt Fraction has been... I'm afraid he's going to turn into the new Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, they've already started to turn Hickman into that, where it's like, oh, you're really good? Let's give you a hundred books. Right. Then he's only good a fraction of the time. Ah, uh, you're so funny. All right, and that was, uh, <laughs> that was our vlog for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. <laughs> One pun every hour. Okay. Only because we stop after the first five minutes. <laughs> All right, so, Andy, I didn't get a chance to read in Humanity. But I didn't either. Because you hate fun? Point. I do. I didn't Point number one. Um, <laughs> point number two. Is it true that Bartok the Leaper is on the cover of Inhumanity? <laughs> it still looks, like, it no, looks no. like it. First of all, it's Batrock. I'm sorry. That was a great mistake. will be in the Winter Soldier movie. Yes. Um, yes. That would be awesome. But two, that is uh, Karnak, who is one of the Inhumans, and he can find the weakness in anything. You mean there's an Inhuman on the cover of Inhumanity? There is. Oh, that's weird. And, and his great power is he can see the weakness in anything. So, like, for example, when he watches our show, he'll know that we are very unprofessional. <laughs> he'll be like, wow. He'll be like, I can't see the show comment. for all the weakness. The, the he'll good news watch. is the eight people watching this already know at least one of us, if not all of us, right. are like, it's cool. <laughs> Those guys no, sorry. suck. Now, is an inhuman... This is my lack of common knowledge here. A mutant, or is it the helmet on his no, head no. that helps him? There is no... See, this is why they're doing this book. Because uh -huh. I think this is because of the movies. The X-Men universe was sold off in the late 90s because Marvel was bankrupt to 20th Century, 20th Century Fox. Fox. So they own the rights to mutants in the movies. So Marvel wants to throw in some mutants. They can't have a mix-in with their Avengers universe. But... Inhumans are very similar to mutants, except ah. for name. Right. So they can have an inhuman with the power of, say, optic blasts, or that heals really fast and has claws, but they can't have a mutant with any of those powers. They can't have any mutants. Space mutants, pretty much. Uh -huh. Right. Really? So the setup in Inhumanity was basically, oh my god, the terror gymnasts have been released, and all these people are going to become powerful, and they're randomly everywhere, and it's just like a mutant plague, only... They're not called mutants. It's an inhuman. Does this mean we will have X-23 in the Marvel movies? Because they can't use Wolverine, but, you know, that's as close as they can probably get. Well, they can't use her if she's if they call her a mutant, but if they never refer to her as a mutant, yeah. I'll... Uh, and if they haven't over. sold the character X-23 already, too. See, maybe they was, did, but I feel like they was didn't. The, who because was the... Because I didn't... It was Lady Deathstrike in or Origins, right? Um, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'm like... There was a lady Wolverine already right. in this universe, but <laughs> X-23, I think. Was, that was, was yeah. X-2. Yeah. yeah, she had the fingertips, yeah. which was just terrifying. Mm -hmm. She's like my, one of my favorite. <laughs> She's like one of the, my favorite villains of all time, because when I first read this Wolverine comic book, where it really had no point to it except for her being bloody and, and having this crazy... <laughs> so it was a Wolverine comic. It was a right. Wolverine comic where she just was really bloody and had really long, like weird-looking hands and these little robot guys, not robot guys... And they went the after. Reavers. The Reavers. No, yeah. sorry. Was Reavers it? Yeah. No, yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Reavers mail. I was like, am I thinking of Firefly? No, no, no. They were called the Reavers too. The Reavers. And there was like a little girl from the. What was that? LCD. Power Pack. Oh, uh, Power Pack. Oh, yeah. They just show up in random places, don't they? Yeah. But that was an old one. Because there was Albert and LCD in Wolverine comics around that time where Albert was a 
robot version of Wolverine who had a robot little girl, pigtails and pink dress that hung around with them, Albert and LCD, and they went off and fought crime too. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It, it, it Why kind hasn't of was. that been relaunched? Is my Why hasn't that been made into a movie? What's even better is when, Fox. when Albert <laughs> and LCD have to fight the orphan maker and uh, who was the, there was, wait, the nanny and orphan maker. So nanny was a robot. An orphan maker was a spoiled little brat in a big bevic mech suit who was raised by the nanny, and they went out and tried to kill parents of kids with powers so they could then adopt them and raise them. Wow. So, thank you, 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody read a fat book and said, how can I make this way cooler? <laughs> <laughs> so there were villains that thought they were saving all these kids by killing their parents and raising them to be superheroes. It's kind of like what uh, they were doing in pre-Blackest Night Green Lantern when... Uh, you mean when the book was good? Yeah. When Krypton was walking around killing uh, Green Lanterns and stealing their babies just because she wanted to collect babies. That was, was a going, wicked creepy. She the, was super creepy. The action figure that was so creepy because it had the little babies in the back of the rib cage. And I was yeah. like, oh! <laughs> oh, yeah, have, I've got we that. We have that. Yeah, got that. <laughs> we could have Nicolas Cage star as her in the movie. He, and that's our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he won't turn down that role either. No, he won't, he won't turn down the role. He's already done that role. Didn't he? Uh, when he the Wicker him. Man? No, no, before Wicker Man, when he's like had a mustache, it was a 80s or early 90s movie. Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona, Arizona yeah. he was stealing babies. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. the only movie he didn't suck in, besides The Rock. He also had hair in that movie. Con Air. Yeah, that movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Start to finish. Every time I talk about how much I hate Nicolas Cage, somebody in the room is going, wait, Con Air. Come on. <laughs> and usually I bring that up as an example it's of how much he sucks. Right. Here's Nick Cage in every movie he's ever been in. <laughs> the end where's right. my million dollar paycheck i can do this <laughs> keanu reeves has more talent than that guy and that guy sucks yeah he's gonna be japanese for the new uh yep. yeah let's have he's the white guy japanese. save the uh, like, well, asian culture work? hey oh, hey world. tom cruise did that already once no, no no but tom cruise at least which that movie would have been so much awesomer if tom cruise wasn't it but at least tom cruise was playing a white guy it's true keanu reeves is playing a japanese man yeah. <laughs> that was a very strange move i think because you know there's no actors in japan or there's no. no American actors of Japanese descent. No, not even a little bit. They can't even hire a Chinese guy and pretend that we don't know the difference. <laughs> and let's face it, American audiences don't no, know. They want to know. Whatever. Oh, same to you, Round Eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, am, I, am I insulting your heritage? <laughs> <laughs> so we had been talking about <laughs> humanity. Speaking of humanity. We were. Yes, in humanity. Um, and and it, I had read an article recently that... Um, the, the upcoming Inhuman book, uh, Fraction was going to write that, and Marvel booted him off of it. Oh, so that's a separate book entirely. I yeah. thought we were talking about Inhumanity he was going to get kicked off. No, no, it's, uh, no, it's Inhuman. It's, yeah. I, Inhuman is spinning off of Inhumanity. It's, Inhumanity it's, is the event, and there's like all these little offshoots. So it's the enough. summer event in the winter. It's right. super straightforward. I don't know why you're doing this. <laughs> um, have you been reading Cataclysm? <laughs> right. I want to read Cataclysm, but I don't know how. Well, we should talk right, about Cataclysm. Give me $100, and I'll give you what's come out so far. <laughs> and then give me another $100, you can have the rest. And then when you figure it out, tell me what happened, and, and I'll give you $20 back. <laughs> Fair enough. That's so, pretty much how it's going to feel. <laughs> right. They've promised me the death of the Ultimate Universe three times now. And I want to see it die, all of them. And whenever they kill off characters in these big universe-ending events, the characters typically stay dead. I mean, they brought Spider-Man right. back, but it was like a different guy, so it was okay. No, 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 no. Oh, when they killed they... Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe, when they were originally in um, Ultimatum, because the, the sales sucked, so they were going to yeah. cancel the universe. They killed everyone off. Sales were great, because everyone that had stopped reading the book came back to see it end. Right. So they went, <laughs> uh-oh, we can't not have Spider-Man, let's bring him back. So they brought him back. People stopped reading the book because we, we only bought it because we wanted to see him die. Right. We killed him. We're done. Then they're like, oh, huh. sales suck again. What do we do? Well, let's kill him again a year later. Right. Or if you just left him dead and gave us Miles Morales then, <sighs> ah, happy to right. dance. <clears throat> Instead, you're like, let's kill him off, bring him back, kill him off, bring him back. And now I don't care that they're going to kill him off. Do right. not care. But they introduced at the end of uh, Age of Ultron that... Are the six one six Galactus showed up in Ultimatum, or in the Ultimates universe, and I just want to see him eat everything. 
I just want to see him go around and destroy everything you could possibly want. I want to see him destroy everything except I want Miles Morales to hop through the Right, that's what everybody wants. Make it back to 616, and that's it. That's all I want. We've already got (laughs) Spider-Man 2009 to 9 in the main universe, so there's room for more Spider-Man. Right. (laughs) And I mean, we're only canceling Scarlet Spider recently, so I mean, he's been going for a little while. Well, what's what's better? What if they're canceling them so they can bring him in so they can have the X Super X Spider Clone massive crossover event two thousand Clone where... Saga again? Let's <laughs> <Yes>. do it. <laughs> it worked so well the first time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but think about it. You can have eighty six Venoms, three Carnages, a Partridge in a Pear Tree, an <laughs> Akana Spider Man, and twenty nine Mandarin shows up. Two more Hobgoblins. <laughs> um, Mandarin's like, excuse me, I have ten. All right. <laughs> Next holiday season. <laughs> Get ready for the ultimate spider apocalypse. <laughs> spider Sp- Clone Saga two slash Spider Island. I feel like we're missing an opportunity with four horsemen of apocalypse. I'm just saying. That's already four... over. Here, so. Yeah, it's too hard to say. Well, I mean, yeah. you can't melodize that. Come on, seriously. We can find a way. <laughs> but yeah, what what is the deal with Cataclysm? Because some people have come into the store asking me, like, hey, what order am I supposed to read these in? And I look at the little sheet that we got that tells you all the books are in the series, and I still can't tell them what no. order to read them in. You're supposed you to do. toss them in the air, and then wherever they land, whatever lands on top, you read that one first. Oh. They're all semi-separate stories. So you read if you read whichever title, you, like if you're reading Spider-Man and X-Men, you better pick up those two. So that's why there's two Ultimates, because we had Ultimates, and we had Ultimate Avengers for a while. And then when sales dropped on those, they kind of merged them a little bit. But now that they're ending it, they've gone back. So that's why we have four different Cataclysm books. So you can read, you can just read the end of your universe. They're all going to die in separate ways. And then you're going to buy the bookend books. There's Cataclysm, you know, 0.1 and 1 or whatever they're calling them. And then in between are all the minis. So all you have to read is the 0. whatever and the 1, and you're good. But if you really like, say, Spider-Man... You read the Spider-Man one and ignore the rest. If you like Ultimates, you read the Ultimates one and ignore the rest. If you read them all, read them all and don't care about the order. They're not going to coincide at all. Well, that's kind of cool. That's good. That's so informative. It's, <laughs> it's the best and the worst of the the, the crossover schmegma that they do. Where right. they're... <laughs> but the weird thing Thank is you for they... the reaction. I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing is they bring in Cloak and Dagger. Like, oh, the, the series is dying. Let's bring in Cloak and Dagger. Well, well that'll that'll save it. <laughs> there's no shorter way to cancel something yeah, than to bring in Cloak and Dagger. It's like that's the, we don't want it to awesome. suffer, okay? <laughs> so just put it out of its misery. How can we kill sales quicker? Cloak hey, and Cloak and Dagger, why don't you come on? Uh, why don't you join us? We're done. <laughs> we'll make them. It's like DC lovers. starting a new Hawkman series. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have like 73 Hawkman number ones. <laughs> I feel like the best way to do and no truly, number twos <laughs> to truly kill something is you put Cloak it's and Dagger in it, and you ask Rob Liefeld to do the covers. <laughs> Uh, and just murder it. Why you gotta be just on poor Rob Liefeld? I always dis on Rob Liefeld. Listen, always. We make Chuck Chuck Houston can write it. <laughs> oh, that would help. Wait, who is the guy who's writing Deathmatch? Paul Jenkins. Yeah. You suck, Paul Jenkins. He, you suck. He is pretty bad. <laughs> what is he doing these days? Deathmatch. Deathmatch. Well, what is, what is Deathmatch? I don't know him. I don't know. Um, him. it. It's a comic from uh, is it IDW or Boom Number or Games? Yeah, Nine, it's man. Yeah, you. Pick a, <laughs> hey, look, it's a bunch of guys with powers, and they'll fight to the death, and the winner gets a prize where his book gets canceled. The end. And we'll keep... <laughs> the prize is the book gets canceled, and the reader doesn't have to suffer through it. <laughs> Everyone wins. And all of the characters are so generic, but not even, like, generic in the, we're trying to make them generic. Like, we want to make a Batman, we want to make a Superman sort of generic. They're generic in the, I'm a genius, I'll have this guy that gets powers from an insect. No one's thought of that before. <laughs> there, there was a, there were a few characters that were blatant ripoffs of other characters, other things like there. But there's was... no blatant ripoff of Wolverine called Dogman or whatever the Dogman, whatever the hell his name was, <laughs> Dog 100. He's a clone of another guy who's got the yeah. It, it's tell it's me crap. he's a clone of Dog 99. It's a crap. Please. There was there was a guy named the Rat. And he looks exactly like Rorschach, exactly, except his mask has a little like rat face on it. Black Excellent. marks on a white mask. They just want to be yeah. a mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that book was great. That was a good book. Now they and you copy. flipped it over. You had the modern age, the 90s version on one side, and you flipped it over, and it was the Silver Age on the other. 
all yours for only $1.25 cover price in 1993 or whatever that was. That book was awesome. You're nice. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I prefer to look at it as... 1993, I was um, in preschool. <laughs> I prefer to look at it as that's giving me more time to read more comics. It's true. And look how happy you are for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We haven't stopped him from singing yet. <laughs> that, that was the whole oh, pre-show. Oh, it's just... lovely weather. <laughs> Put some comic books together with us. <laughs> this is the holiday episode. And we're now down to Happy five holidays, years. everyone. <laughs> Come back, viewers. Stop changing the channel. It's we will thing. beat him if he sings again. <gasps> now you're going to get some views. <laughs> <laughs> We're like mo the, mojo, the mojo verse. Everyone's tuning back in. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we need some X babies quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see the Ultimate Universe die so bad, so badly. It it was they. Unfortunately, I blame Jeff Loeb in Ultimates Three for killing the Ultimate Universe. It was a really great universe until that god awful abomination. Right. You should blame Mark Millar for going and making his own comic books instead of finishing <laughs> Ultimates, which we liked. Right. Ultimates One and Two were so worth. The entire Ultimates run, I feel. And in Ultimate Spider-Man, I hated the idea. Loved the series for... I mean, I, they redid Clone Saga, and I enjoyed it. Right. Like, that's how good that series was. Oh, the way they reintroduced Venom, I thought was amazing. It was, it was so much fun. I really hope that when they reintroduce him in the, in the movies, which they inevitably will, they do it that way, because that way was so effective. Right. Yeah, I, it, it was, he, was, he, was ba he was a botched attempt to cure cancer. Yeah, he gained some six sentience and bonded with Eddie Brock. Yeah, because it was like Eddie's dad worked with Peter's dad to create this living organism that could cure cancer, and it like went wrong. So they, I guess they couldn't kill it, or they didn't want to kill it, or the company that financed them didn't want to kill it, so it just got locked in like a vault somewhere. And then uh, Peter and Eddie like become friends, and like Eddie is a little older than Peter, I guess he's like in college or something. Yeah, he was, like, I think, like, four years, three, four years, somewhere around there. It, it wasn't, like, a huge age difference, but it was enough that he's like, I remember you. Yeah, and I think, like, Eddie and Peter have a big History falling class, out. class, second period, man. <laughs> <laughs> they have, like, a big falling out during one of the storylines of the comic, and then they find out about this thing, and Eddie gets a hold of it, like, while well, he's all about and hating totally Peter. And then wedges Peter. Yeah, he, yeah that's, that's how it culminates, is he wedges Peter in a black costume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, this it's actually, really is pretty intense. It, Venom is, the, when he first shows up, Venom is horrifying in the Ultimate right. Universe, and he's so well done. It's totally right. worth checking out. I just like the Ultimate Universe, where, like, it would introduce something that you thought you already knew, and then just throw a fastball at you. Like, when I was reading, uh, when Ultimate Wolverine vs. the Hulk finally actually <laughs> came out, and we were reading that. For those of you who don't oh, know. Oh, it wasn't that late. <laughs> there was only three and a half years between issues. I thought it, I thought it came out straight to trade. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it might as well should have. But um, they introduce uh, Gen Jennifer Walters, and they're talking about how she somebody had man made off with uh, like this serum that would turn anybody into a Hulk. And so they're, everybody's going after Jen Walters, like, we need to stop her from becoming a Hulk. We need to stop her from doing this. And all of a sudden, she's like, they meet her in like, in China, and she's like, I'm buying a copy of, a bootleg copy of Star Trek, leave me alone. And they're like, really? That's all you're doing? And it cuts to Betty Ross giving herself Hulk serum, and she becomes the first She-Hulk in the Ultimate Universe. Oh. And it just, that, everybody's expecting Jen Walters to because of 616, but they just did it completely differently. God, and then they could have... Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these storylines that came out years ago, <laughs> and you spoil them. Yeah. P.S. Vader's Luke's dad. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Bruce Willis is actually a ghost. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. So Die Hard two and three, he's already dead. Can we just yep, assume, can we true. just assume that Bruce Willis in every and movie five. is dead? I feel like that would make every movie better. Just assume that really? his character is a ghost. <laughs> That's oh, how he's able to live through all the stuff in Die Hard 1. He actually dies in the machine gun when he's running over the broken glass, and he poltergeists the shit out of the bad guys. I like it. I like it. Done. Here, here. I just retconned Die Hard and made it plausible. <laughs> instead of, now instead of awesome, it's super awesome. Either that he's dead in real life, awesome. That's a... and he's alive in all the movies. Oh, man. Oh, it's like the picture of Dorian Gray in film. Yeah. <laughs> he can only live by sucking the souls out of everyone that gives him $10. And I will keep giving him $10 to watch every <laughs> god-awful Die Hard movie. What are we on, like 26 Die Hards? Something like that. I don't uh, care. I'm still going to see the next one. Six. No, I didn't see the last one. Oh, it's awesome. He's in Russia. Isn't that's, that's, the, that's the plan. 
Oh, Shia LaBeouf is such a hack, too. <laughs> you suck, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf you suck language. in everything you do and everything you say. I believe it's pronounced Shia LaBeef. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's pronounced, uh, I'm a dumbass that steals everything I've ever done. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was some controversy about that recently, recently wasn't there? Yeah. There's, there's a lot, and the more you read, the more you realize, wow, this guy's kind of a jackass. And he I've doesn't have talent. Things. He's got nothing going He's a talent guy like, and a jackass? Like, wow, at least, like... Keanu Reeves is, like, the nicest guy in Hollywood, so he's got that for him. But, Shia, you're not you're not doing too well, buddy. Nope. So there was a period where he lived in the woods and ate people. But, you know, that, that was the best <laughs> part of it. <laughs> you know, it must have been so weird when they were making Constantine, because he was, like, the nicest guy in Hollywood and, like, the biggest douchebag side by side. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw Constantine. I didn't know Shia LaBeouf Le- Le- was in he's there. He's Constantine's sidekick who doesn't appear in the comics anywhere, so it oh. didn't make any sense to add right. that character in the movie. I saw the trailer for that, and I was like, like, and I'm done. I'm never watching this. Right. This is the opposite of everything I that watched, are supposed to be. I watched Constantine, and I was like, oh, this is based on a comic? This is nothing like what I just saw. It was it was like, it was was like not horrible, but it was Constantine in the way that DC's relaunch of Constantine is Constantine. And I think they were trying to sort of go for that movie feel when they were relaunching Because, yeah, let's, let's relaunch the comic in a way that reminds people of the movie failure that we had. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. That's a good idea. That'll sell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how you make books, isn't it? You well, just copy things. Already. I mean, unless you're Marvel, in which case you just put Wolverine in them. <laughs> no, unless <laughs> you're Fox. Spider-Man. If you're Fox, Spider-Man. you put Wolverine in them. Wolverine. What does the fox say? Snick, snick. <laughs> <laughs> what does the fox say? Um, has, oh. I, I'm the best I am at what I do, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> has anyone been reading Long Shot Saves the Marvel Universe? No, but I think I might don't like to. fun. I might want to now. That it's I a think. comic book about Longshot, and you know what he does? What? Saves the Marvel Universe. Stop spoiling everything. I spoiler alert, Longshot's in it. <laughs> More spoiler alerts. Saves the Marvel Universe. Does he save it from Deadpool and the Punisher who... No, no, no. The Marvel he Universe? saves it from... This is a the different... This Does has, this happen before this is, those stories? This is now? mainstream, like, this is 616 sort of storyline. This is canon? This is, this is canon? but not Nick Cannon. But this is uh, canon, but not canon, canon ball. Uh, and it's got, to make it even more awesome, this book is so, it, this is crap that's awesome. It's not a good book, but it's awesome. All right. So issue three has guest appearances from Wolverine, Lord of the Vampires. What? Wolverine is in that book? No, no, no. <laughs> Wolverine, Lord of the Vampires. He gets plucked from, an, from a What If comic. Where what if Wolverine became Lord of the Vampires? <laughs> you said you said the two words that will make me buy any book. What if? I love those. I um, love what if books. Doctor Strange is in it. Yes. Uh, Cap Wolf gets pulled out of the time stream. From I saw that. The god awful Cap Wolf storyline from 1992 or whenever that came out. And they explain it. They they actually I, I won't spoil it, but they they make it make sense within continuity. Yes. It's brilliant. <laughs> yes. And yes. And I'm reading this and I'm just like. Okay, it's jumping the shark. But it jumped the shark and did a pirouette and landed gracefully. Okay. <laughs> and now the shark is on a jet ski <laughs> and it ran aground and walked away. Okay, we're good. Like, <laughs> it grew wings and flew like an angel. No, it, it, the shark free willed. <laughs> <laughs> the shark jumped <laughs> us. <laughs> That's what happened. The shark jumped us. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, it's like. Um, it's like, you know, going to see a really goofy, cheesy, like, action movie. It's it, high-quality like cheesy. Shots. Yes. It's like, you know, some, some extra sharp from Macheta, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this this ain't no, no, no ghetto no, fabulous. No, this. <laughs> no, they're all Italian. I don't know if you know this. The Italian community is quite prevalent in Vermont. <laughs> Apparently. Yes, because there's one thing that Italians seem, seem to love, and that's no socialization at all, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the quiet. Yeah. The woods. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I've eaten dinner with my relatives. No. <laughs> they don't like the quiet. <laughs> they ruin the quiet. <laughs> so back to uh, comic movies. We were talking about um, some awesome ones. What are your thoughts on the Sandman one that's going to... Oh, okay. I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He can do no wrong yeah. as far as I'm concerned. For those well, who's who... that? I thought, I thought Eddie Furlong from Terminator 2 was doing the, that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Eddie Furlong? No. 
Oh, man, I was trying to figure out how he got a new career. <laughs> so for wow. those who have not heard about the, the Eddie Sandman. Furlong is not Jody Gorsa Levitt. What? That guy. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. He's not that not, guy. He's, he's not that guy. Joseph Gordon. For all those people who are getting them confused, who's no one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not no just one. Just you. Just you. No one. Yes. <laughs> I'm not even sure you're real. But, okay. <laughs> okay. <not. laughs> when you're, you're watching the video rest. later just to see if I'm on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why is the chair empty? Who am I talking to? Oh my god, I'm Bruce Willis! <laughs> am I dead? Spoiler, Andy is Bruce Willis at the end. <laughs> or Spoiler yet, alert, I'm not here. Better yet, we all go watch the video later and there's somebody just like sitting at the table. Bruce Willis is just sitting here watching this. <laughs> okay, okay, but uh, the news is, the official news is, uh, Gordon Levitt said that he is producing a Sandman. Is G Gordon and Liddy's in it? Yes. Um, uh, he says producing a Sandman movie, it's probably going to be based off the the prequel series that they're doing right now. Boring. Um, and then the the hints that have been dropped are that he may be starring slash directing it. I feel like I'm a little worried about that part. Yeah, because I feel I, like if you give one person too much, it's just going to become worse. If he were to Zach produce, Snyder doesn't agree with you. I'm aware of that. <laughs> But anyway. Look at the awesome job he did with Watchmen. Hello. <laughs> Was there anything disappointing about that movie? I know mm, my sex I rest scene, my case. My sex scene uh, needs were met. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to watch really awkward sex between an old fat dude and a chick that used to be hot? Done. <laughs> but it needs to be to the very slow rendition of Hallelujah. <laughs> <true>. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody felt okay. the same way they felt when they watched their first sex scene with their mother in the room. <laughs> it's like, can this end now? <laughs> and Ellie, the one thing I will say about that movie, not enough slow wagging blue dong. <laughs> <laughs> Never enough. Uh, Just slowly wafting in the background. <laughs> For the record, he has like installed the, one in his it house. It was like the uh, thing on a grandfather clock. <laughs> Just a pendulum? <laughs> yeah, the pendulum on a grandfather clock is perfectly keeping time. Well, yeah. It was great. I mean, that's what its purpose was. <laughs> I said, tick, talk, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> okay, but... It's oh, yeah, you want to talk about Sam? Okay. Say, <laughs> how do people feel about that? Can the if it wasn't really have a Warner point? Brothers DC, I might be excited. They've given me zero hope to be excited about anything movie-wise that they're doing. That is a really good argument. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic about it because I do like Joseph Gordon-Levitt and I do like his work. And he's, he's never a given, talented guy. Yeah, he's, he's never a given a stinker. Yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> First time for everything. Yeah. But, uh, no, he, he's a talented guy, and he has, like, a lot of vision, and, like, I, I follow his internet presence a lot, and, like, the stuff he comes out with is always good, and he always has solid reasoning behind, like, all the decisions he makes, and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Like, I can just back this guy up all day, but Warner yeah, Brothers. Know. But Warner Brothers. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, what was the last good live-action thing that Warner Brothers slash DC properties have done? Oh, they're including DC? I can't tell you. I mean, the, the Nolan's Batman movies. The second, the second the, Batman. The second one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that I mean, was, I think we're going back like a, five years now? I think you can make horrible. a case that the third one is like the third a one was decent enjoyable. The third one was garbage. The third one was meant to sell horrible. you popcorn. The I think third that's one, true. The, yeah. the plot went right over your head the entire time, and you're just like, Batman's fighting stuff. This is great. And then you go back. I disagree and, there, Nola. No, <laughs> but, no, but like, no. You, the, you, the, go away, like, kid. You bother me. <laughs> no, the initial watching of it, you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then you like think about it and like you're trying to tell your friends about it later and you're like and then this happened why did that happen wait and you just I think about it later fine. and you're like Ugh. the best part about that was watching Heinz Ward blow up that's the only reason that movie's good you suck Heinz Ward you suck I thought he beat the bomb he did but I'm sure he died right afterwards but the stadium blew up in my mind <laughs> Heinz Ward got blown up <laughs> I just remember he climbed a lot Sure, it was a movie about climbing, actually. Yeah. It was it was are you sure you climbing. didn't see 127 hours? That could have been it. That no, movie, that, that movie, didn't have did he fall off? That movie had more action. Get a rock well, in his arm? They had about yes. the same amount of time. Did Batman have to take his arm off? Did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I vividly remember him sawing his own arm off. <laughs> My favorite part was the scene where the cops hold up their pistols and charge the machine guns and start getting mowed down. Then Batman flies in with his chopper, shoots one of the machine guns and flies off and lets the other machine guns continue to kill all of the cops. <laughs> really, Batman? You couldn't have wasted, I don't know, a second and a half to go bam, bam, and blow up the other machine gun? I'm just my, saying maybe you would have not let those other My favorite Batman 
trope is that he will not use a gun unless it's strapped to something with wheels or can move. If it can move, he'll shoot the hell out of anything. Go read Detective Comics 27 for his appearance of Batman. You know what he does? He flies through the window, shoots the bad guy. Yep. But Batman doesn't use a gun. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not believing in the first issue ever. He shoots the bad guy. And the cops go, thanks for doing that, Batman. <laughs> this is before... Or before sorry, I'll do it in my Bane voice. Ah, thanks, Batman, for shooting the bad guy. <laughs> Snidely Whiplash. <laughs> Snidely Bane. Whiplash would have sounded better as Bane. <laughs> He has the Bob's Bad Goldthwait would have sound better as Bane. <laughs> Bane's voice was was lamer. Yeah, I can't go anything worse than Bob's Bad Goldthwait. I mean, seriously. I was about to say. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, right. no, I, I, I jumped the shark. I apologize <laughs> to our listeners <laughs> out there. Would have made a good Bane. There you go. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Why Tyson did you die, Bane. Sam Kinison? Come back to us. Mike you and Bruce Willis. Is Bane. Mike Tyson is. Bane. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm gonna go punch you in the face. Got it. I'm gonna break your back now. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, so like, why did you hit my tiger? <laughs> Why'd you hit my tiger, Batman? <laughs> that was the whole problem. He's like, why? But but after Dark Knight, what else have they have they put out? I mean, I know we Man know they put out Green it. Lantern, which was awesome, right? I oh, think we're all, we're all in agreement. Uh, oh yeah, right, right. High, high, high production value. I can honestly say that I will, I have not and will still not pay money to see that movie. No, no. <laughs> I've seen it. He has I've seen movie. it twice, but I ain't gonna pay money. For you it. watched it the second time? Oh I no, have you have it. to take. You have to take friends to be like. You have to see how bad this is. Yeah, I. And then you got to give them running commentary. But yeah, I've yet to see it free once. Good. Yeah, it's if you watch it's it really free, not it's free. not that bad. You can you can yeah. watch just, it without paying money for it, but it's never free. There's always it's there's always a toll taken. For you. No, it's it's, for your it's not that bad if you watch it as as I did, where I pretended it was a sci-fi channel movie of the week, and it's pretty good. Yeah, it plays it's out Shark like Nido, a sci- and, and the it's very good. No, no, with that. No yeah, right. and then when you think Jeez. about it as oh, this was supposed to be the hundred million dollar summer blockbuster. What a giant festering pile of dookie. Right. This is just steaming pile of elephant dung right here. Does he make a punt boxing glove with the ring? He makes a big hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't a boxing glove. Boxing. Oh, they, he basically does the that, yes. He uh, makes a racetrack. He, he makes a Gatling gun. Actually, that was kind of cool. My favorite was when he made a flamethrower that shot real flames. <laughs> and I was just like, why did? how does flames actually show up in here? I can understand if it was, like, brain fire. Yeah, but you don't understand a lot of things. Really it's true, I don't. But no. You thought the rat queens were actually rats. I did. Yeah, and he... it felt like it was completely believable. <laughs> yeah. He, I was talking to him about rat queens, like, yesterday? I think it was yesterday. And he's like, yeah, well, they are rat people. So I'm like, wait, what? Wait, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I, I, I read that. That showed up in my Facebook feed. I'm like, I cannot comment. Must not comment. <laughs> <laughs> I had, like, a bunch of my friends liking it. And I I'm believe like, oh. wholeheartedly they had ears and tails. Yeah, he's like, they have right? ears and tails. Like, like, are we reading the, the same guard. comic book? <laughs> no, no, mouse guard, those are actually mice. Yeah, the That's enemy. what makes that the story rat good. Queens are their, rat their queens villains. is just their name. No, they're just they're just they're the heroes, first of all. They are heroes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're also a variety of they're fantasy heroes. races. Yeah, they are several races, they're none of which are heroes. Ah, a little fit, Macy. They're Shiro's. <laughs> Shiro, Princess of Power. Yes. Oh, so good. Shiro. <laughs> I'm going to point out that if anyone's in the Northampton area, we have DVDs, and one of them is the He Man <laughs> and Shira Christmas special. What? I know it's, well, I know no, it's they don't. Time. They don't have it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now it's gone. Is it it's that VHS? time of year. Um, no, it's, DVD, no, it's on DVD. We watched that last year. You just Christmas. ruined Chris's Christmas present to you. <laughs> Alex, way to go! They don't have it anymore either. You're way. a ruiner. You're a ruiner. That was gonna be a secret, top secret plan. Yeah, I watched it last year for the first time ever. We watched it last year. Yeah, that was that was. Oh yeah, it was you, me, romantic. and John. Yep. And uh, it was. That's it was, how I know it's true love. You're still together beautiful. after watching that abomination. <laughs> We've seen a it lot was, of abominations. It was We've watched the holiday special Come together. On. Cringer is in that more thing. than once. Oh, uh, that wow. I have that on DVD. The I've, Star Wars Holiday Special. I watched that once on Fast Forward, <laughs> and the best part of that was still B. Arthur. <laughs> it still is. She's, yeah, she's the best part of that. Yeah. The, B. Arthur's beauty is the best part of that movie. B. Arthur singing a slowed-down version of the Cantina song is easily the best 20 part minutes of, of Art Carney movie. conversing in Wookiee. The, the whole movie is in, is in Shrewook, and it's the greatest thing ever. 
You're just sitting there like, this is what? The problem is when you start understanding what the Wookiees are saying. Yeah, that's, that's when you need to go down. Turn it off like, oh, I need to walk away from this for a while. Although they were ahead of their Step time. Step away from Kashyyyk. <laughs> they, they did have Cirque du Soleil they did have in Cirque hologram Soleil. form. And they True. also had hologram interspecies masturbatory material. It's true. It was... It was yeah, it's was called B. Arthur. <laughs> no, there was, there was that lady singing that weird 80s song Well, No, 70s. 70s. Oh, 70s, 70s song, yeah. whatever. 79, I think. 79 or 78. Before I was born. Um, song, and then... Chewbacca's dad was just going to town. Chewbacca is a Wookiee. It's a horrible song. You should go look at it. Google it. Yeah, Google you'd it, love Google. it. If you, if you it. watch the Christmas special together, you'll love that song. Well, we didn't say we liked the Christmas special <laughs> together. We said we watched it. And you it. guys aren't even crackheads, so like, at least that I could like, oh, you guys were on a bender or something, but you're not even crackheads. Nope. I can honestly I mean, say I've seen sense. it about six, six times. I don't know if I can be friends with you anymore. Like, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to talk to well, you. Well, he doesn't, like, pop it in. They're like, all right, time to watch. It's life <laughs> day, guys. Time to watch the holiday special. <laughs> Which, by the way, is November 17th is life day. You're dead to me. <laughs> drink drink your Shaq Fu soda, and, and you're dead to me. <laughs> we're into the rest of the podcast with my hand like this. <laughs> That's all it hand. took? This is all it takes for me, Andy? <laughs> I should have done this years ago. <laughs> you could have gotten yourself out of so much ridicule and then have to like, pick up your books every week. <laughs> you could have just told him when Life Day was. <laughs> He's going to look it up later, too. He's going to be like, wait, what day did he say Life Day was? No, I'm not going to look it up. You need to wear a Snuggie and hold a glowing ball. That's Life Day. Yeah. Yeah, that won't be happening. <laughs> yes, it will. You will see me <laughs> celebrate Festivus before you'll see me. Actually, I am having you a Festivus are, sale. A Festivus sale. Yeah, I kind of. I guess I kind of am celebrating Festivus. So, all right, see you celebrate Festivus before Life Day yeah. next year, November seventeenth. <laughs> Damn, I will celebrate the awesomeness comics are like of DC off. Comics before Ooh. I'll celebrate Life Day. Ooh. Ooh. I will with something amazing. Next year. I will celebrate the awesomeness they of fire, Damn Idiot before I celebrate. <laughs> they fire Damn Idiot and hire... Oh, I'm going to learn to do backflips just so I can do backflips down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that crazy bald dude doing backflips? They fire Damn Idiot! Woohoo! Ah, <laughs> oh, my back. Why is he naked? We don't know. He didn't that, say he that was going to do that part. Yeah. Because they brought Rob Layfield back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I would be painted blue so I could be like Dr. Manhattan. Ah, but then it's okay. It'd be a little dumb. Then it's just PG. Then it's just PG thirteen fun, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Spray paint myself like a giant Smurf with a dot on my head. <laughs> Day glow blue paint. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid. Worst I Halloween had. costume ever. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had an issue of Watchmen, just because some family friend was like, "Here's a bunch of comic books," and one of the last issues of Watchmen was in it. And you just stared at that blue dot. I was just like flipping together. Like, what? Is this? Why does he have a nipple on his forehead? Why is he naked? Why is he blue? And why What's... do I get? Why do I only have one issue? I don't know. What's I'm going so on. confused. I'm just putting this over there now. No context. That's right. I the had best a... way to take Watchmen is from the middle with no context. Tarantino. No, no, from the end. No, no, Tarantino. From the end. It. Seven, two, five, four, ten, one, nine, three. Done. Read it. You're welcome. Don't read issue You're four. Full <laughs> I'm gonna try that now. <laughs> He's gonna rewatch this and be like, "Got it, got it, got it. Let's do this." <laughs> of course, I got it. He's gonna be. At home I have a quarter like a million movie. comics. Do you think I don't have Watchmen? <laughs> Sadly, that's not an exaggeration. I have a quarter million comics. Oh no, <laughs> most and of that's why a lot of them are this. around here. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. What he other, what other have topics a story. did he has we a big have? Closet. Did we did we have other topics? No, we have officially yeah, hit our topic list. All right. Yes, we, we wanted to uh, talk about how much you love DC Comics <sighs> and how <laughs> you wish they would go back and redo foil covers again, along with how you wanted to talk about how awesome Lobo looked in the third revamp. <laughs> <laughs> so New 52 is on issues, what, 26 plus the zero, so we're... A little two plus, and a half years, two, a little less than two and a half years into the DC Fifty Two, mm -hmm. they've now just done a third revamp of Lobo. <laughs> really? Wait, they've done a third already? Yeah, the first one was normalish looking right. Lobo, you Lots know, as we hair. remember yeah. him. Then they did the Stormwatch did them, mm -hmm. and oh, actually, sorry, this is fourth. Sorry, Stormwatch did one, and then they did the um, in sync super, you know, teen boy band Lobo. Right. And now a in young, Supergirl, young sexy Lobo, yes, <laughs> Prince they, Lobo. They've merged the last two, and he's a little more buff, but he's still got the 
the swoosh hair going, <laughs> and he's got like the sleeveless vest that's like buckled with like lightning bolts like slashes on it, wow. and it's like. Uh. I'm a and he's got a little hook, Donnie, but he doesn't have a chain. But he has a little hook. He's a little one. Ah, let me get you. This is in. This is Super Bowl. Why is Super it girl. like all Super of girl, your awful voices? Are, are always, Bane? Ah. <laughs> they're all sniping with blood. They're all Bane. <laughs> they're all like a 1940s gangster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I watched because I watched Dark Knight Rises last week, and I can't get that voice out of my head. It's honking me. <laughs> man, 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 eat your brain. I'm Venom. Man, <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Get out of my brain, you horrible <sighs> voice. They, and they went back. That was the voice they wanted. They had to reshoot a lot of the audio because they actually recorded it with the face like this. So they were back and recorded it just like that. <laughs> so they did that on purpose. They had to go back and redo that audio. That's the voice they wanted. Yeah. Wow. It's final. It's what the people show want. Abs. <laughs> it's true. Man. I'll get you and your little dog, he can too. Just talk to me in that voice all he wants. I don't care. I'll still eat food off his abs. I don't care. You'll eat food off his ass? Uh, yeah, that too. Ugh. That too. Oh, it is a nice ass. Ugh, I don't care how nice someone's ass is. I'm not eating food off it. <laughs> uh, I like Put a cloth over clean. it first. <laughs> Put it like a cloth. Nice, nice banana. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we're going to get classy about it. Oh, there is. I think it's in Tango Cash. There's that, that great scene where they go into like this high-end club, and there's all the naked girls lying there and, and the, the high-end businessmen are eating the sushi off of their naked bodies yeah, that's and when what I saw that about. when I was like 12 I was like that is awesome now I'm older I'm like ew <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad for the girls just sitting there and being like I'm getting sticky <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 why do yeah, I have to be the hors d'oeuvres <laughs> should not have been the soup <laughs> <laughs> oh I hate queso cheese sauce <laughs> I hate fondue night. <laughs> this chafing dish is killing me. Bring <laughs> uh, right, back to comics. Comic, comics and more. Comics, comics and more. And the more is naked so chicken sushi. More. Apparently. Really, it's going to be the and more podcast. <laughs> Let's just take the comics you off. You want the there. comics come to this door. You want the and more, however. Uh, it's tune, after in, hours. tune in next week on channel. Blah, 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 blah. Video <laughs> <Yeah>. Reddit <laughs> Post. <laughs> Um, so are you caught up on you, you on all your Valiant books? Because no. you're the only one that actually reads those besides me. Well, I don't. Basically. I don't read all of them. I don't read Shadow Man because you hate fun. Because okay. I hate fun, and I don't. I don't hate fun. I'm no, 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 mostly just Alex. I'm missing of. certain Exo Man of War books because they had like sold out before I got a chance to read them. So I'm not. I, Which is saying some things considering you work in a comic shop. Well, let, I if, know. If right? you ask nice, I'll let you borrow mine. Yes. I'm. Exo is awesome. I don't want to talk nicely to you, though. Oh, well, then <laughs> this, is, uh, this is too much for me. I, I, I hope you get a bowl in um, your anus. Ooh. Ooh. No one's eating food off of there. Uh, <laughs> so. And Noah still would. <laughs> there goes my dinner plan. Depends if I'm hungry or not, man. So Unity is really cool, but I'm noticing something. Okay, you. For those who don't know, uh, Valiant Comics is amazing. You should go. Read if you're not all reading of them. Valiant Comics, punch yourself in the nuts. Seriously. And then go it. buy all of them. While you're recovering. Go grow some nuts, then punch yourself. <laughs> uh, they We're they, engaged. Technically, your nuts are my nuts. Does that true. mean I get punched so twice? So you get punched twice. Sorry. Fair enough. One in <laughs> each. So. Baby, come on. One in two of them. So they, put out, <laughs> so they put out an event, what, last year um, called Harbinger War, and it was which amazing. Was awesome. Yeah. Um, in which they combined two of their books. And now they have an event called Unity. Which is also amazing, but I'm finding that the continuity in it is not as well adhered to as they did in Harbinger War. Because that was one of the big things about it. It was like everything that well, was Harbinger happening. Well, Harbinger War was only, it was, it was Harbinger, Bloodshot, and Harbinger War. So they, it, was, yeah. it was 12 issues, four in each of the three books. So it was a lot easier to keep track. Keep track. Yeah. In this, there's different stories happen at the same time. So I'm, and they've given me two years of awesome, so I'm going to give them a couple yeah. more issues to yeah, totally. sync it up. But uh, but it's really cool. I yeah. The only thing I was weirded out by is um, uh, one of the characters, Harada, is going through this big thing in the book that he's that's more central to him, called Harbinger, and like none of that is touched on in the Unity book. And since it's such a big deal for him in his main book, you kind of think they'd mention it, but they're not. So I'm still sort of hoping, like, at the end, they're like, here's the time frame for this book, and it happened either after these events or before or something, so it makes sense within continuity. Well, that's what I used to like about the original Valiant Universe that was launched in the early 90s, late 80s, I don't remember when, but each one of their comics, they, they, they date and timestamp them at 
various times in the comics That's and or the first page. So you could always know when they happened and their promise to us as the readers, you know, when Jim uh, Jim Shooter was still in charge was all of his characters would age. He didn't want, you know, so he didn't want like Spider Man to be twenty four for three decades. Right. So he's like, they're going to age, and to prove that they're aging, we're going to put the time in there. The added bonus to that is, hey, now you know how they all intersect. So when they, you're reading, you know, Shadow Man, and it says <laughs> June first, and then you read Harbinger, and it says, you know, July thirtieth, you know, well, it took place two months later. Right. Now I know what you at home are thinking is that wait, comic books. They're not at home. Can... They're at work. Work. <laughs> work on YouTube or on SoundCloud. Yeah. No one wastes uh, time at home listening to this stuff. Come on now. They're right, in their car do. or they're at the gym on the. I now, whatever. They're not at the gym. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Comic <laughs> geek stuff. Hey, hey, now we're a visual media, so don't do this in the car. Don't die. <laughs> Yeah, no, because if you die, we lose one-eighth of our viewership. There's right. no law against watching podcasts while driving. Although yeah. it does fall under the category of no driving recklessly. but so It ain't recklessly to be entertained by our awesomeness. Yeah. Watch this while driving, just don't die. Okay. Because then we'll running. lose, you Keep know. one eyeball on the road. Why? Okay. She said, okay. eyeball. Oh, damn it. But, but yeah, so when we talk about Please Valiant and we talk about nitpicking this continuity stuff, I'm sure a lot of people who haven't read Valiant are thinking, continuity? That doesn't matter. I read DC. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, but seriously, like, read Harbinger War or, like, any of the other Valiant stuff. The continuity throughout. Yeah, same defeat. Yeah, it's, it's perfect, which is the only reason why I'm pointing it out in Unity, because it's, like, the only time I've noticed like, and it's not perfect. Yeah, not in, perfect in two continuity. years of comics, that's, this is the only time they haven't been amazing with their continuity. And, like, and and that's, like, the only bad thing I can think of to say about it. Otherwise, like, the art's great, the storyline's really cool, there's great action, um, they're bringing together a bunch of really different characters from different books that you wouldn't think would interact, and they're having them interact in a really, in a way that makes a lot of sense. And they, they mess with the reader slightly in the industry more in the first issue they have the unity team that they create oh yeah that was good <laughs> which so, was just oh that was the greatest panel and a half <laughs> that's one of those things for old valiant fans because there was the old valiant vet unity that happened so when they were doing this one they they do a thing where they they were like we're gonna f tell you why it's called unity and they bring in this team of superheroes who you've never met before and they're like we are unity and then they jump into battle all die in like a, a panel they just all get killed <laughs> and then you the term unity is never brought up again <laughs> I like it. yeah it, it's it's fairly brilliant because you're like, uh, because I mean, look at all of Marvel and DC's events. They're always to launch the next event or the next team book, or you know, they're right. like, yeah, no, we're doing Unity now. We have a team called Unity. They're dead. They suck. Don't do it. <laughs> hey, X Force did that too, though, <laughs> and then became ecstatics after everybody died. <laughs> That was that was the greatest one issue of X Force ever. Here's all you know. Mike Allred's uh, first issue is here's the new team and they're all awesome and you, we're gonna spend all this time introducing them and now they're dead. Next issue. <laughs> that was an amazing comic. That whole run is fantastic. I feel like a book where everybody dies is amazing, especially okay, if yeah. you don't know they're going to. So you're like getting invested and all of a sudden like where did everybody go? Well, that's why I, I got hooked on Starman. I, I, I bought that because that was in my, I had to buy all the Zero issues because I mean worth a million dollars phase. Right. So I bought Starman Zero solely because I bought all the Zero issues. And I read it. And I'm like, oh, this is so dumb. This character's dumb. It's Ted Knight's son who's taking over the mantle wearing the stupid cheesy, you know, Golden Age costume with the giant, you know, phallic symbol, you know, rod of cosmicness. And you're like, oh, this is going to be so dumb. And you turn page two. He gets shot in the head. Page three, he's lying on the ground in a pool of his blood. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, he's going to be dead. Like, he's the main character. Oh, no, he's staying dead. And now the dad's trying to convince the other brother to take up the mantle. And he's like, why would I do that? You just, like, you, you wasted your life, and now my brother's dead because of this. Why would I do that? That's dumb. And the rest of the comic is him going, oh, all right, I love you, Dad. I guess I'll do this, but I'm not wearing tights. I'm not holding the giant dildo. Like, we're going to do this my way. And he just, he was like a normal person that was, like, thrust into the superhero world and was like, oh, all right, but I'm going to not do this the lame way everyone's done it. I'm going to wear normal clothes. Hey, I'm going to fly. I'm going to get goggles. Right. Hey, I'm going to fly around and fight people. How about I wear, like, leather jacket so that when I fall and get my the crap kicked out of me, I'm not wearing underwear. 
Right. If it sounds like it. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a really good idea. How come everyone else doesn't do this? Right. <laughs> we he don't have pin particles. <laughs> he kept his store, too. Yeah, and he kept his collectible store. I was like, this is like my dream. Like, this is what I wanted to be when I was 12. Like, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be Jack Knight. Like, oh, uh, I get to fight crime and sell people funny books. <laughs> Done. <laughs> If you see me up on the roof later, don't call the cops. <laughs> I'm calling the cops. <laughs> There's the crazy No, no, no. He, can th he thinks he can fly. Let him do it. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Let him jump. It's only a one-story building. It's good. It's only a broken leg. <laughs> It'll be hilarious. <laughs> got 911 ready to go. I got 91. Jump. <laughs> uh, so, Steve, we don't have you on the show too often. Or Hi, ever. Steve before no, um so i'm curious us. what what are the books that you've been reading lately that you're really into i've been reading okay i'll lean in close <laughs> <laughs> i've been reading well, yeah, hunt and image books People I, I, don't, I don't read any more dc books at all yeah you do so all of them i'm like oh i come in like, oh, wait i don't think i have any dc books anymore but i read remender books rick remender books because he's hilarious I mean, even his stuff that's supposed to be serious is pretty hilarious. I like, um... Frank and Punisher? Frank and Punisher. Yeah, Frank and Punisher. <laughs> Frank and Punisher is good, but that's older. But that's Frank and uh, Castle. It's Frank and Castle, yeah. Black Science is really interesting. Oh, yeah, Black Science is super cool. Oh, yeah, two came out yeah. this week, too. I haven't read yeah. that yet. Um, and I read Saga, and I read... Because Saga's Saga. awesome. Because it's... I mean, that that also it. came out this week. Basically, all the image books that come out, I almost buy, because they're doing what they want and I feel like that the writers do a better job that way right they've got great artists because the artists can do what they want and are you not... reading Lazarus the Greg Rucka one no I don't for some reason I don't read Greg Rucka books because you hate fun too it's yeah and hate... everyone hates fun except for me it's no it. it's because I hate I can't <laughs> have two I need to have you hate fun too. Rucka. I think Wait. that Brubaker or Rucka is like a, a choice Oh, no, no, no. See, okay, first of all, Brubaker's the correct choice, regardless of the question. Right. <laughs> but with that said, you know, that's like, you, you have, Brubaker is the up here, and everyone else is down here. So all of the everyone else is, Rucka's, you know, Rucka's in that really good category. You can't compare him to Brubaker, because everyone sucks compared to Brubaker. See, but Brubaker's my crime fiction guy. Like, mm. he's crime comics. That's what I do. I don't really enjoy, uh, just watch that. Read those. Rucka. Uh, it's, it's not. A, I don't need another crime book. I don't need another one there. That's enough. And I need my fun stuff, which is Remender, because he writes like about strip club zombies, <laughs> and he just like writes whatever he wants, and it's just fun, like punk rock. And there's some else coming out, some punk rock school or '80s one that's coming out. What is it called? Uh, so about teenagers or something, and he's putting out soon. So there's some weird noises coming from next door. <laughs> We're next door to a 7-Eleven. It could be anything. <laughs> could be. Feasibly. Oh. Especially downtown Northampton. It yeah. could be hobos. It could Have be hipsters. Have you been reading uh, Rat Queens at all? <laughs> I, well, no. I didn't actually know that Rat Queens weren't rats either. So I feel like I... Yeah, but he, see, like, he read the book and he didn't I, know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't read the book. I read I half of the book and knew that they weren't rats. It's not He unclear. read both issues. <laughs> That's like... You read hey, Saga. I've read one issue. He's read one issue. Right. You read Saga. Do you know that the chick with wings isn't a, isn't a dinosaur? I'm pretty sure she's not. Then you would she... know that they're not rats. For the record, she's I didn't think they were rats. Right? I thought I they weren't rat. I thought they were rat people. Yeah, like rat human hybrids. So you well, thought it was a furry book, is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, and now yeah. I'm, I'm now, he, now he doesn't want to read it anymore. <laughs> Where am I going to get my furry book? I mean, if you, yeah, if that was what now you thought it was. Now it's back to my little uh, Friendship is Magic. You have pony. that. Yes, yes, he does. It's oh, right, right. There. i got like 20 copies right there. The, the variant cover <laughs> yes. for My Little Pony this week, uh, they're all seahorses. Oh. Clever. Seahorses. So I like Clever it. Clever turnips. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Wolverine was going to be in My Little Pony soon. Oh, oh I would read that crossover. They're going to kick him out of... <laughs> he's not even going to be a pony. He's just going to be a legitimate Wolverine. That's what the shocking thing in that Wolverine comic that they... It's groundbreaking. Yeah, okay, it's ground game game yeah, we didn't talk about this. Okay, there was an article um, that, I guess, Marvel released it, like as a press release thing, and they were like, listen, nudge, you guys, Someone stole this idea. <laughs> listen, you guys, in, in six months, we're going to relaunch Wolverine's, like, standalone title, and it's going to be groundbreaking. Ground. Breaking. Like, they couldn't emphasize enough how much it was going to blow our minds. But they didn't want to tell us how or what it was about. And I was like, you guys, it, 
You don't get to decide whether your work is groundbreaking or not. All right. the, the readers do. The last two things Marvel has told me were groundbreaking were Guardians of the Galaxy number five, which nothing happened, and then they moved it back to number six, where they brought Angela into our universe. Ooh, no one cares. That was groundbreakingly stupid. <laughs> the, Unprecedented. The time before that, when they were... Oh, it's groundbreaking! You have to buy a million copies. Was Battle Scars? Now, Battle Scars was the issue uh, where they brought the Samuel Jackson Black Nick Fury into the main Marvel universe by giving Nick Fury an illegitimate child, then having his eye get gouged out by Taskmaster, who the last time we saw Taskmaster was revealed to be a Secret Shield agent. So he still <laughs> captured a Afghan war vet and gouged out his eyeball and gave him an eye patch and named him Nick Fury and then brought him back to the Shield so he can now be Agent Fury. Spoiler uh, alert. <laughs> right. Who showed up with his friend, Agent Coulson? And they brought Coulson in. Yes. And was that was like, much easier, though, because we were like, oh, here's this random guy in S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, it's Coulson. He, he was always there. It was, it's fine. Was I thought playing. there was a moment where he was like, if you're going to give me a job, you have to give my, my buddy Coulson a job, too. And they were just like, okay. <laughs> that was like Chuck D. when he brought Philly Hurt Faith. He's like, I'm not doing the album unless I have this guy with me. And they're like, what does he do? And he's like, I don't know. He just stands there wearing <laughs> ridiculous outfits. Um, he so knows the, but I so thank Chuck D for that because, man, I love the hell out of Flavor Flav. <laughs> so Flav is like Ch is Coulson. <laughs> so this means that yeah, what? That, that's, Nick Fury is That's going to be the quote for this, okay? <laughs> Flavor Flav is Coulson. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> okay. uh, so, so does this tell us that the groundbreaking thing is Wolver in Wolverine is they're going to bring in some other character? The groundbreaking thing is going to be, hey, look. Wolverine is going to have a fourth claw that comes out of his eye socket. <laughs> Man. There, was a, there was an artist. Wolverine's bane. There was Man, an, I'll damn you. Man. There was an artist who, was, who took Wolverine. There was an artist who took Wolverine and Cyclops and had them switch power sets, but not switch the location of their power sets. So Cyclops looks over, touches his eye, and two knives just shoot out of his eyes. Don't go anywhere, they just extend. And Wolverine just looks at his hands like and he has three people. spots that are like glowing. He's like, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to pop them. <laughs> but I thought that was the most genius thing ever. Claws. Claws. Have that power. Headbutt everyone. Claws. I like it. <laughs> I'm not really sure that's anymore. You still have Beak. Oh, Beak. <laughs> oh, too bad Joe's not here. He could join in the Beak hate. What is I like Beak. Beak's Dude, funny. Beak was originally going to be in Wolverine Origins. He was hilarious. That's who <laughs> Dominic, Dominic McGannigan was going to play, was That's, Beak. Uh, Beak is ooh. awesome because why wouldn't there be the uh, Master Mary. Mutants that have oh, really crummy powers? Why that not? Yeah. I mean, no, no it makes sense. Mutants are happening. That's why we have Blob. What's your power? Oh, I'm a fat guy. <laughs> no one can move me because I'm fat. That's my power. That's not a power. <laughs> Just eat a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> He's constantly robbing delis. That's how he's a, that's a super villain thing that he does. Like the original, the you know, uh, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants was Toad. What's your power? Uh, I jump around and lick things. Oh, well, <laughs> oh so you, you hang out downtown Northampton. You hang out in front of Brugger's? Like, <laughs> I can't I can't take a mutant seriously when their character story is the exact same of Fat Bastards from uh, Austin awesome Powers. powers. <laughs> it's the same story. Um, same power. In their defense. Blob was around 30 years earlier. That's fine. Same story. So, yeah. In so the events of Decimation, who. Yes. the events Wait, after... Mike Myers copied something? No. No. <laughs> Granted, he does it brilliantly. You're a genius, sir. But... Yeah. Have you seen <laughs> Love Guru? Love Guru. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's awesome. See, the problem is... Get out. <laughs> I would kick you out of your own store right now. You just no, talked no. about how you watched the Christmas special. Yeah. <laughs> what? All right. You have One, no basis for this. I said the, lo the Love Guru was awesome. I did not say it was good. Okay, I'll give you that. All right. I so, never said the, the Yeah, we never said the holiday special, special was, good. was good. I just say I watched it a lot. <laughs> no, I, I believe you did say it was good. Rewind. Go back to minute 3842. What? And, uh, <laughs> 38.42. <laughs> Someone's gonna go back and check. Three thousand eight hundred forty-two or thirty-eight minutes in forty-two 40 seconds. Ah, ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, you're so bad at this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we we got to wrap up. Right. Uh, and on that, that note, note <laughs> closing thoughts. So thanks for uh, tuning in uh, to comics and more. I'm Andy. I'm Chris. I'm Steve. I'm Lex. I'm Nola. Oh, we did it in order. Get back to work. <laughs>